uh, I feel like a lot of answers to these questions are like for a lot of people and I could be entirely wrong Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, you know from what I've read in books seen in movies seen on YouTube all this other stuff I feel like people's coming out for a lot of them is like build 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 boom happens all at once and a thing like that is like it come out you know what fuck it I'm fucking proud to be gay coming out process and probably my getting to a proud point were all a really long process. Mm. I think I would say that the time, the place that I, when I got there, when I finally got there was a lot of convincing, like a lot of, there was a lot of practicing saying it in my head, much in the same way of me being like in the back of my head when I finally got to the point of like, I'm not just staring at the underwear packages at Myers, like there's a reason and then I started saying that word Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know back back in like fifth sixth grade um and uh so that process though I I think happened um leading up to a lot of practice of like no I'm I'm proud yeah I'm proud no this Mm -hmm. is good this is okay um to If I had to, like, put a a point on it, it would be the same thing, like I said earlier, as, like, when I came back from from Ireland. Yeah, I feel like you had a lot of freedom there. Like, also, you were completely divorced of your normal context. Exactly. It was the first time in my life that I got to try out Hmm. me. Hmm. So Without any family. Yeah. Without your normal friends. No one's going to find out. No one's going to find out. None of these people know me in my personal life well enough so whatever life I project to them is, your is life. my life. Right. The Bible Belt Rumspringer. Yeah, the Bible Belt <laughs> Rumspringer. <laughs> oh my God, that's super accurate. Uh, and the worst part was, as I found out that there was like, because uh, uh, Ireland is like super LGBT pro, even then, mm-hmm. even then, uh, uh, which, you know, way before they passed marriage equality, I found out, like, the week before I left that, like, a couple of the Irish guys that were in our group, they were like, oh, yeah, like, my best friend's in charge of, like, the gay community thing over here in the country part of Ireland. I'm like, what? You mean I could have been hanging out with queer <laughs> Irish boys this whole fucking time? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, you know, getting to be over there, I got to, you know, be like, what's it like for me to just say, yes, I'm gay, as opposed to... Uh, I, there's all these little things that you have to do where you like that I've tried to move away from to to now, but there's these little things where you come out in in the smallest of ways because you don't just come out once. Mm-hmm. For people that are that are not what people term femme, mm-hmm. you know, that are not obviously gay or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I at least hope not hope. I at least am told. That I don't come off as obviously gay. Um, but there's all these little coming out that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Like you have to do it at work. Mm-hmm. When a new person mm-hmm. comes into work. Mm-hmm. When somebody comes in from another office. Mm-hmm. When you go to a, a different restaurant. When you, you know, right. all these little things. Right. And it was nice, like only having to kind of not really do that. I got to pretend like it didn't matter. People would say, uh, oh, do you have a girlfriend back home? And I'd be like, nope. nope. I date boys. And it was easy. Right. Because there was no... Skin in the game. That's There's no skin in the game. No, that's exactly true. Because yeah. this person is either is either totally not going to be a part of my life in a matter of a month, mm-hmm. or they're going to be a classmate at my university right. that I can be like, man, I don't really care who you are. Right, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No skin in the game. That's exactly true. Yeah. Um, so coming back and coming home and and doing that um, uh, was elating. I sat you down and I sat Nick down and I told you both that I didn't want you to keep helping me not be gay anymore. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. 
Yeah. I don't remember how I responded. I don't I, either. <laughs> I really hope it was positive. I'm oh, sure you don't it was remember. Po- yeah, if it was I'm negative, I, I would have remembered. Positive positive about it. No, everything, everything, that's, that's the deal. Every coming out experience I have ever had has always been positive. Well, that's good. The people that maybe I didn't come out to but found out through some other people and didn't respond positively, they backed away out of my life and I didn't notice it at all. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any... I mean, I had some people like that. I was like, "I this is why you're not talking to me anymore." But and that was, and it's no like, one was a deuces. Yeah, <laughs> no one was a dick about it. Like no one was obvious. But that also comes from that West Michigan Midwest nice Catholic not going to talk about it thing. Oh, it's where they're good just to like, see you. Yeah. Good to hey, see brother. you. Hey, brother. How are you? <laughs> and they're like, I'm just going to love on them. That's just what I'm, I'm going to do. Gonna love them. Oh, God. And then the and then the res crew who is just who does exactly that yep. is just like, oh yeah, well. We're just gonna love him, love him through it. <laughs> so, I feel uh, sorry. Yep. I really want him to get the like yep, his body. Totally. Like, like so, you're, one of the pauses could be in when you when you actually were like, I'm ready to come out. Those experiences were good. Very similar to Jordan's like weird knit like when. His positive and the negative, they had, like, a weird similar similarity. Yeah. Like, the longer you were waiting, like, and all the slow burn to it, but, like, when you actually got there, it was positive when you were arriving there. Yeah. This is what I'm picking up. Is yeah, there yeah. is yeah. there more that you'd like to talk about in the positive realm, if any? And honestly, you could be, like, honestly, being gay in West Michigan is the worst. Fuck this. <laughs> I don't know. I like, but, like... But there I are feel like I feel like there's still... Um, there has to be some positive experiences or she wouldn't be here. I, in my, I mean. <laughs> like, That's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, well, that, I, so just in reaction to that, I do have something else to say, but in reaction to what you said, um, it's not the positive gay experiences that have kept me here. Um, as, mm-hmm. you know, you've heard, um, all of you have heard, mm-hmm. uh, is uh, my friend group was incredible. I have literally the best friends ever. And uh, they were more than enough reason to stay. They were more no- more than enough reason to put off grad school so I could play mm-hmm. and hang out and do all that stuff. And I, uh, I was about to say I never felt like I was missing out. No, I constantly felt like I was missing out. Mm-hmm. I constantly felt outside of the group but also inside of the group. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, you know, and I constantly felt like I had to like explain and defend and, uh, you know, help people understand and all that sort of stuff so that I could be a little Mm -hmm. bit more equal and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it really, really sucked not being a part of like a group of gay people. Mm -hmm. Um, to this day, like I still like, I have two, maybe three people that are like gay and are my real friends, my true blue right. forever friends. Um, and they're not even friends. They don't even know each other. And so it's like not even a group. Um, right. You know, I see that in the TV and the movies and I'm like, I want my gaggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but um, on the positive but on the positive side of things um, I have met a number of people through the years that have made, been a nice uh, breath of fresh air. Um, when we uh, were really active at Mars and we got into small groups, mm-hmm. um, and I think you weren't going as much, but I was still going to Mars more often. Um, that's when I met, or reconnected with Justin, Justin Voorhees. Oh, yeah. And that was a really positive experience because me, him, and then we found out later another guy in the group was also gay. Mm, right. And that randomly wound up in the same small group mm-hmm. uh, for, at church. And, and, and we had supportive other people mm-hmm. that, were, that were with us too. Was it Josh? Not Josh wasn't gay. The Josh, uh, the youth pastor side now. Got it. Like... No, he wasn't in the group, but he was wonderful. Yeah. Um, and is still a, a good good friend to meet up with once in a while but um no justin uh just he's a good dude he's a good guy Mm -hmm. helped normalize my life he i felt like i found another person who was like me who was 
Christiany, mm-hmm. but also liberally. <laughs> liberal, liberal. Uh, you know, I was going to say not liberally. Liberal, not liberal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, liberal. Yeah. Uh, who's also liberal? Who's also loves his family? Who also went through a lot of the same struggles? Oh yeah. It was so nice to know that somebody else was out there who went through the same struggles, who was still loved and accepted by their family, but there's still like a little like hug, but mm. but push at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like he gets it, mm-hmm. and it's and it's hard because you know you can explain it all day long. But not everybody can get that. Right. And it's right. just nice to have somebody get that. Mm. Um, so that would, be, that would be a really positive experience. Now, as I'm talking about this now, I did have... <laughs> no, no, no. There was a time when it was, it was me, Jeff, and the other Jared. Oh, yeah. The three of us. Yeah. When, I when remember that, that connection happened, that was a good solid like year and a half where like... Mm-hmm. It was the three of us. You had your gaggle. went out all the time. I had my, my little baby gaggle. I remember that. And my bagel. My bagel. <laughs> baby, baby gaggle. gaggle. <laughs> bagel. <laughs> bagel. But one contribution to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was wonderful. While that lasted, that was really good. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, the only side note that I want to say this whole conversation, which I think that the viewers might appreciate, is that like when I met you... Um, I was extremely young, but also like, uh, I, I had grown up in an extremely conservative home, but like, I, I didn't understand Catholics. (laughs) I didn't understand Irish people. (laughs) And I definitely didn't understand gay culture at all. And when I met you, I was like, what what is all of these (laughs) things? There's a lot to learn. (laughs) There's There's a lot lot to learn. But we covered it, though. We covered it. Uh, But uh, we used to have these conversations for like hours at the pizza shop we used to work at that doesn't exist anymore. Literally is gone. Torn down. Um, Which is weird to say. Yeah. But I I, I remember the one crucial moment for me when I, like, being around a lot of the conservative people that we were when they were like talking about get it into heaven and all that kind of shit. And I remember like the thought of if Jared can't get into heaven, I don't want to fucking go. Mm-hmm. Like that was like a that was uh, the very clear day. And when whenever people ask me about like when did you become accepting of gay people, I was like it was like when I met Jared. <laughs> like <laughs> like when I got I, to like know when them. I got to yeah. know one, yeah. <laughs> like an at like like a real human. Right. Not like the idea yeah. of because yeah. it wasn't just like the idea of getting like you embodied a lot of things I was like uh, yeah. I don't know about those cultures I don't know about those things yeah. mm-hmm. but then like once I got to know you I was like oh it's a great guy why yeah. why yeah. was We're, I yeah. why yeah. was yeah. I worried yeah. <laughs> why were we talking about why, this? Was we yeah. even dis- why is this even a discussion why is this still a thing yeah that's a, that's a good that's a good point like why is this is a thing but I definitely remember the clear moment of like yeah if he if Jerry doesn't get in I definitely don't want in. Yeah, and then I was like, yeah. I don't think there's an in. <laughs> like that, which is yeah. like, that's the next step. Like, I don't think there's an actually an in. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think See, it fucking Lewis matters. There's says there isn't, and everyone loves him. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody so, loves him. All right. Um, Let me check the camera. Do you, want, do you want to ask me a question now, or do you want to wait till after Matt goes? Uh, do you want to take a break? Yeah. Wait till after Matt goes. All right, cool. Is it going still? Do you want to pause it and keep it going, or did I, you? I restarted it. I restarted this one. I that one. I stopped and started. Okay. So we have like another thirty odd. Okay, cool. Oh so, with, well, with that in mind, I'm gonna grab a beer because I don't want any more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling tonight, gents. With the sleepiness. Yeah, you've had a long couple days. Tired. <laughs> hmm, I wonder why you're tired. Oh, stop. <laughs> He's a busy man. <laughs> Okay, so we've been going for about 48 minutes, so we're getting close we to the hour. Minutes. But, like, we're gonna, I'm not, you don't have to warp speed through <laughs> any of this. I still, no, we can warp speed through my yeah, stuff, that's fine. Um, <laughs> we can edit like half of my stuff, no problem. Here's the thing about going, when you go first, you get it over with. Right. Uh, one of them has already given me an ulcer, so. Right, that's right. Like, when I said, when I knew that you read one, I was like, well, which one do I want to do? <sighs> I, I kind of like the first one, and let me tell you why I like the first one. Because we've done a lot of talking on that. Yes, because I, I, I feel like, <clears throat> Can I ask him the question? Yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this, yeah, new? Yeah. Is this yeah, okay? That's totally, yeah. Breaking I mean, the norms. Yeah, I mean, this is great. I'm yeah. Jordan, ask I'm away. <laughs> hey brother, how are you? Um, <laughs> I am <laughs> <been> better. <laughs> okay, so now, let's cheers for Jared, by the way. Yeah, thank you for being Seriously. vulnerable. For the honesty, man. Thank and, you. Uh, Appreciate it. 
I, you probably weren't prepared for that on any level. Also, you asked no. for like the warm up, and I was like, that's not how this I works. Know. <laughs> you saw me eat shit before. I mean, yeah, that's, 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 fair. that's what's going to happen. Okay, so a lot of the conversation that you've had on this show yes. is around filmmaking. Yes. I think if you ask somebody that doesn't know any of us beforehand, they would say, oh yeah, Matt's the film guy. Wait, you do film? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so to that point and to that end, I think this is an, an interesting question. Mm-hmm. So, if work and filmmaking were off the table, they're not on the table anymore. What aspects of your life is <laughs> you? Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone. spent the past no filmmaking, <laughs> no work, things outside of those two. So, if what your identity you? was gone. <laughs> Man, I, I think this is actually a really great question. It is. This is a good question too. I. Because it puts things in perspective. I feel so much better about my answer now too. Like, oh. You know when you build a really tall tower of Legos and eventually it tips over. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely know how that feels. <laughs> That's what this question kind of feels like. Uh-huh. <laughs> of like. There, there's so many facets that go into why. And I think at the end of the day, it kind of touches back on your idea of like being a good listener and that providing a sense of knowledge and security. Mm-hmm. And if I know this, then I can uh, get through this week, get through this month. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... The more I know about film, the more I do with film, the closer I get to actually like a moderately sustainable life doing what I want to, I feel like I'll be okay. Mm. And it's been in the past couple of weeks where I'm like realizing like, I think things are a little off balance as far as like what I spend my time doing. Um, I've, and there's so many factors why. Mm. Uh, age. I've made three career swaps by the time I was 27, um, substantial ones. Um, and so I feel like that puts me behind. Uh, not actually being good enough in my mind at what I do for how long I've been doing it is another thing. Um, the fact that I've had perceptions of myself that there are certain things I'm not good at, uh, relationships being one of them. I think drives me a lot. Hmm. And so um, I, I think there's a lot of like failed relationships in my past that have like I'm finding comfort in getting good at stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, but here's the kicker. The good stuff that's been coming, like the accomplishments, the fun stuff, that doesn't last like I thought it would. Hmm. So, what do you mean? Like, give me an example. I uh, found out some, like, uh, tentatively. And that's the thing, the other thing in the industry is, like, it's really exciting to get, uh, it's easy to get excited about tentative news. Um, found out a project I've been working on for a while is going to get some coverage on the Today Show on NBC. Like, that's really cool. That's kind of dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially considering it's for an amazing organization. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, I would, part of me, if a year ago, you had said, like, yeah, you're going to get some, be responsible for, like, some Today's Show footage. I'd be like, wow, I must be doing Really kicking ass. Kicking ass. Right. And yet the fear and the terror so quickly consumed that that it made not a ripple in my day. And I think, so the question is, who am I outside of my work? Because like, you were still talking a hell of a lot about work. <laughs> I'm trying to say... Who would it be if you didn't have that? (sighs) Who would it be if I didn't have that? Mm -hmm. Welcome to an existential crisis. (laughs) He just Um, starts running around the table. (laughs) Like, what would I do with my time if I didn't have work? Or, like... No, who would you be? Because it's specific. Like, who would you be? Because, like, the thing is, like, if any one thing defines you, like... When that thing goes away, yeah. what do you have? And that's yeah, that's not you then. Yeah, right. Yeah, because you're not you're the sum of your parts. You're not right. just one part. Right. At least that's what I hope most people 
subscribe to on some level. I don't know. I mean, I'm only gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only. <laughs> right, but uh, you're, you're also a grad student. Uh, um, no, I I don't know if I'm going to be able to give a good, good answer on this episode. Um, you don't have to. Like, part of the thing about being vulnerable is like saying I don't know. Is kind of a terrifying question yeah. or answer. Um, well, because it's true. Yeah. That might like, be the answer. I mean, I think all three of us would like to say things that you are because we're both, I think we're all feeling like, oh, he doesn't Help know. Him. <laughs> Help him. Help him. I'm like, oh, this is his answer. This is his answer. Okay, so right. I'll say this. I, mm-hmm. I, I, when Caden was asking me which question to do, I really wanted to do this one because I wanted to hear your answer because I struggle with the same thing mm-hmm. all the time. Like, I feel very much so defined by what I put out in the world or what I do for work. So, for instance, if, like, there's criticism of a job I've done at work, I don't. It's not good. Like, I don't feel good. I, I, pan- panic. Like, I, I panic. Like, I'm like, oh, shoot. Mm-hmm. Like, Can't do that again. It, and I honestly start to tell myself, like, I'm not good. Mm. It, like, all-encompassing, like, I'm actually not good. Mm. Like, I don't have value. Mm-hmm. So I was curious what, what you say. I'm curious if you feel the same way. Yes, because even in the in the past couple of weeks, I've realized that like there's kind of an imbalance of the where I put my time and energy. Yeah. So I've been like looking ninety five for... percent into film. Yes. Uh, yes. Ninety eight percent. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> um, and looking into ways to like not do that as much, I bought a book on physics. And I've just been like reading about like some stuff that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking at different like places around Grand Rapids to volunteer. Um, but even then that's rooted in performance for others. And so if it's not filmmaking, then it's going to be like, um, doing good for others, being there for others, like being able to like be useful to others. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the biggest thing is like, um, I don't know how or when it started, but that belief that I'm only as good as I am useful to my friends. Um, I think is whether it's, and you can swap out friends for anything. My mom, my job, my community, my community. Um, I'm only as good as what I offer, and I don't know if that's because of growing up in the church and stuff like that. I don't know if that's um, a lack or an excess of something in my childhood. I don't know. And I think that even like you, that idea of like knowledge as a security blanket, mm-hmm. I would love to know where this comes from so I can at least like, you know, reverse engineer a way forward. Right. I don't know where this is coming from. And so like when you don't know where it's coming from, how do you fix, mm-hmm. how do you treat the problem, not the symptoms? Therapy. <clears throat> Amen. Like that, yes. Huge proponent for the past five years, therapy. Right. I am in a, and you can attest to this, much better position than I was uh, even just a couple of years ago. Oh. Yeah. Um, and... There's still a long ways to go. Uh, and I think that's the other thing is like with therapy, um, it's like the gym where yeah. Yeah. Physic- people will go to the gym and you stop and then you get flabby and therapy's the same way. Like we live in a world <laughs> that like, <laughs> I, I honestly believe like the world has shifted so much that humanity is struggling to keep up. And so that the therapy, just like a hundred years ago, if you're a farmer, going to the gym is the dumbest thing on earth because you're out in the field all day. You're working, you're up, you you don't have enough food to get fat. We live in a world where mentally it's the same situation now, where mm-hmm. things are so easy that when tough things come along, we're like, what the... What? How do we deal with this? We have time to think. We have the privilege of, like, working through childhood traumas. And so, um, therapy's fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I think the people who mm-hmm. don't go or think they don't need it are the ones probably that could benefit the most from it. Right. So. Um, or they're too scared to go. Or they're too scared to go. That's the that's probably one of the biggest kickers. Is you go, if we start unpacking this, <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna end up. Yeah. And Jared, how do you know about therapy? Because <laughs> I'm gonna be one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> not, I'm not gonna. Sorry, that didn't make sense. I'm gonna be a counselor. <laughs> you're getting. Your I'm ma- not gonna be therapy. <laughs> <laughs> All of it, right? You're getting, getting your masters. You're getting yeah. your masters. I'm getting my masters in psychology drinking. right now. Right. That's correct. What is? Thank I guess you. thinking of. The audience in this and knowing that um, the first time going to therapy is probably the hardest. Like even making that first yeah. call slash email. Decision to do it. Yeah. It's just saying like there's a there's a difficulty in that. And so 
if you, I haven't been thinking about it for a while. Um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing. I actually had an easy on ramp because I was with a professor and I was able to say, do you have someone that you trust that I could talk to about something? And they're like, yeah, this guy. Great. So like I had like an in, a trusted person. Right. And it's not every time that you get that. So yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you are interested in counseling, message us and we will suggest people. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah easily. Or like I, I go to uh, third chair. They're amazing. Where do you guys go? Micah at the Wellness Center. I haven't gone in a while, to be honest with you. But you used but to. But I, yeah, I used to go very frequently to. Uh, her name's Gloria, and she actually just moved counseling practices. So, I haven't seen her since she moved. But I'm gonna go see her soon. It'll be good. Cool. And I go at our school. We have a counseling office. So, schools have counseling offices. Do they not? Yeah, uh, every university has a has a, a counseling office. It's true. And it's super easy to get involved in them as well. I am gonna plug that right. Now. <laughs> cool. All right. Good. Uh, Jared, it is yes. your turn to ask, and you can ask away. Um, this is the guest role, so like, it, it put when we put bring someone in and put them on the spot, that person gets to put the host on the spot with a personal question. Jared's done this for fifteen years, so I'm a little scared. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you I'm probably a, should. I'm be. a um, little scared. How do I want to? Phrase it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I don't want to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that may or may not have been the intention, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, when was the... So... When was the so? I don't know yes, what that means. That, shut up. Um, Editing is a fantastic thing. Too. It is a fantastic yeah, thing. So we can hear about it. No, I'm gonna let you flounder. <laughs> Good, <laughs> do it. Um, <laughs> so we always talked about like uh, personality types and things like that. Mm-hmm. Tigger is you. Remember that? Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Tigger from Winnie. Sorry, Bouncing I should have Tiger. The Enneagram, like the Enneagram. Every 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 number on the Enneagram has an associated. Winnie the Pooh character. It does. Because all of the Winnie the Pooh characters were developed based on the Enneagram. What? Yeah, rabbit number one. I'm a two, which makes why. me uh, hey, really? Kanga, the okay. mother kangaroo. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Caregiver. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your your strongest one was seven. Enthusiast. The, the enthusiast mm-hmm. uh, ticker. Uh, and I use that uh, because that was the the bouncy bouncy bouncy. Uh, I'm not going to finish that because that would be so cheesy. Um, All over the place. Person. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you decided to rebrand yourself, I guess. And there was a time, and there was was a fairly distinct period. Mm -hmm. Can you name that? Was there a moment or was that a build up? Mm-hmm. Kind of like how I was talking earlier of like build up to coming out. Like, mm-hmm. was there a. Uh... Mm-hmm. How would you describe the rebrand? <laughs> yeah, you should probably. I like that. Yeah, how would from, you describe the rebrand? From bouncing, bouncing Tiger to Loving Dad? Like, what's, it, what is, what's the difference now? Uh, uh, I think that. it happened before the, the Loving Dad. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it did. It happened before I, Kate. Pre Kate. Uh, yeah. Did it? Uh, maybe. No, maybe. I think it began. Maybe. No, so oh, I don't know. Really, uh, I feel like there was. Some I, so differences I'm definitely before. still a seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, like, you're I'm still definitely, a seven. I'm, de- I'm definitely still an enthusiast. Um, mm-hmm. But what I noticed about so speaking of therapy, you get when you you never change unless you get sick of your own shit. Mm-hmm. So in my yeah. life, like I was really tired of like the same patterns reoccurring. Uh, when it came to relationships or when it came to friendships or when it came to um, the negative things that kept happening in my life. I mean, I was like, oh, what's the reoccurring thing and all these things? Oh, it's me. <laughs> um, so my rebrand, I think, wasn't necessarily a rebrand of identity. It was, I'm tired of being perceived as the person that is going to Make your dance party fun. Hmm. So, like, I I, lo- I do love dancing, and I do love going out and being in crowds, and I do like dancing on bars. Like, there, like, there's a lot of th- fun yeah. shit 
Yeah, you're that good I really like yeah. doing. Yeah, love, like go ahead, give me. Get, yeah, great at weddings. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Um, but I was really sick of that being the only thing that people would want me around for. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it was just like really. I was like, do you have any idea how much I've read, or do you have any idea yeah, how, like yeah. how much time I spend like with people that I care about? I mean, there's just like there was a million things. That I was just like, you have no clue these other parts of me. Like, I can contribute to real conversations. I mean, like, all that kind of stuff. Because, like, I normally got, like, I was like a fly. Like, in my mind, I was perceived as, like, a fly that was buzzing around. And people would go, like, go away. Hmm. And I, but, like, they would want me around. But then they'd be, they wouldn't want me around. They'd want me around. And they wouldn't want me around. So I was like, I, mm -mm, like, you either gonna accept me around or not. <laughs> yeah. So I think it came to a full head before my 30th birthday. I mean, like, like the full rebrand was before my 30th birthday yeah. because, like, I even gave a talk. Like, I, at my 30th birthday, we did a the normal Shrimp birthday boy. thing, yeah. Yeah. and everyone said stuff about me. But at the end of it, I was like, by the way. I will not just be defined right. as the dude that goes to parties. Like, like this is, I was like, this is, that is not who I am anymore. Like, I was genuinely like, that dude is departing. I will still come to your party, but I'm not going to be the dude that's going to yeah. give the speech because you want me to give the speech. I'm like, right. I, I'm not like, you're, I'm not just going to be your dancing monkey. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, that's just not what I'm going to do anymore. Um, but I, I, the intention behind it was because I really knew that if I didn't give myself the permission to focus on the other things that I cared about in my own life, I wouldn't be able to contribute in the ways that I wanted to contribute. Um, and okay, well, let me ask, so let me ask a follow-up question. To sure, that then. sure, sure, sure. So when I, when I first met you... Oh, God. <laughs> the, maybe, maybe the brand or whatever that a lot of people gave you or that was given to me on like, behalf of you. Oh, yeah, Caton, he's our hype guy. Right. That's it, right? So that's, that's the phrase that I often heard. And I'm curious when you kind of put that stake in the ground, whether, whether it was at the 30th birthday or sometime before, did you experience some fallout in friendships? Ooh, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think it wasn't necessarily a fallout of friendship. It was just like a, um, well, no, yeah, de- definitely some fallout in friendships. He, people just didn't know how to. People were tired of me asking them uh, hard questions because, like, <laughs> what what like I really was curious about with all these people that I had interacted and been hype men for and like been the the dancing friend and like mm-hmm. been the fun friend and like not too serious was like the reality was like I was interacting with all these people because I cared about them right and when I couldn't care about them in like all of the ways or like communicate with them like I see that you're struggling with X and they'd be like nah, you're here to duck dance what the fuck are you doing <laughs> and I was like I was like mm, actually right. the whole time I've been about this not just like yeah me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. right so with not that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, like to be honest, like the 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 rebrand is like finally like somewhat fruition because like I finally took the chance of like doing this, like doing this kind of thing because I've wanted to do this kind of thing for a long time. Right. But I was always like, man, I'm not ready. Which was just stupid. You weren't it, ready. It was. It's just. It, it's. I I said I wasn't ready. It was the fact that I just wasn't doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I could have done this a long time ago. Right. But I, I just, it took very long to get there. Right. Um, yeah, but I, I, did I answer your question? Kind of. Was there anybody that you thought was going to stick around that you thought was like, you know what, this is a good lifelong friend, and you don't need to name names, but that you suddenly found yourself no longer willing to walk with you into the second half of life? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Plenty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like, some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, and it wasn't, and it's like no, like I'm not like fuck you. It was genuinely just a. They didn't know how to. They still wanted the same interactions or the same dances and the same movements, and I just wasn't willing to just operate in those terms. Like when you put up boundaries, they were suddenly like, "Wait, what is this?" Yeah, and like I mean, like this is like universal. It wasn't just like my friendships, right. like. 
my family and I are still dealing with the boundary setting. Like my lo- legacy friends, we had to go through a phase where, like, when I moved out of Elmwood, the two I, of us had to. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, dude, we had to figure out what boundaries meant for us." Right, I was like, "I'm, I can't do this no more." And you, it was like, "What the fuck is happening? We've been friends for so long." And I was like, "Well, I've, we are clearly codependent on some weird shit because we've been friends for so long. It's been Let's so stop that." Much time together. Right, yeah. so like, there's there's a lot of that kind of thing. Where I was just like, I actually would like to be my own person. Right. I'm from a huge family, um, and I would, I'm the oldest boy in that family. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, codependency is just, like, ingrained in me. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know what? I really would like to figure out who I exactly I am. Um, and I'm still doing that on yeah. some level. So, like, that, it was like a, the process of the rebrand was, like, figuring out, like, what do I really want? Yeah. And, like oh, now that I kind of know some things that I want, like, I'm going to fucking go for them. Because right. life is going to go, go like that. So I'm like, I got to go. Let's go. Because right. <laughs> well, the seven of me is still there. Like, go, like let's fucking go. That's what I was going to say. But it's, it's like it's, about the things that I want right. instead of like what I think everybody else wants. You went right. from a floodlight to like a laser with the same amount of light, same amount of energy, just you chose to channel that in a little bit more. Oh, I appreciate that because I still feel like I'm a floodlight. But like I definitely like am trying to Much like... Much less of a floodlight than you were before. I'm hone it in. Like, trying to hone it in, but I maybe, feel maybe like... Maybe from spotlight to floodlight. You know, maybe that's... We've gone down like a good night. Yeah. 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 Spotlight's really good. To floodlight. That, that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. No, I, yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky because that... And uh, I think I really wanted to please people for a while. So like... Um, oh, I hate that. I, when I was young... I remember very distinctly, uh, separate from my family, when people paid attention to me. And it was when I was performing. And I was like, oh, so I can get people's attention if I like make them laugh, do something funny, <laughs> mm-hmm. dance a little bit, go to sports, right. yeah. flirt. I mean, like, there's all these things that's like, ooh, I can get people's attention. I like you people's never, attention. You never shown brighter than when you were up on stage at Res. Oh, my God. I fucking giving, love that shit. Giving your, your speeches. Yeah. That, that's that, when you were fucking spotlight. Oh, yeah. And, like, but, like, I think I was, I, and I, I look back on those days fondly, but I also yeah. look back at them kind of like, was I... Was I feeding something that was fully me? And I think parts of it for sure. Like, um, mm-hmm. but I also, it was like, am I doing this dance? Was I doing that dance for me? Or was I like just ultimately like uh, satisfying a lot of people? And then I was like, oh yeah, this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Cause like, cause part of me is cause like. Cause you were dead set then. Oh yeah, I was You were dead, dead set. set. You knew exactly what and who you were supposed to be. At that point in time. So that makes right. a lot of sense. It, but I also was like super young. Yeah. You, I, I was very, I was 17. <laughs> I was 17 and 18. Um, but like most of life is not like this young, um, naive, like, uh, I didn't think any bad shit would happen. And yeah. Like, and that, that, I mean, and once bad shit started to happen, that version crumbled pretty quick. Because, like, I didn't know how to, like, be that and deal with life. Right. Real pain. Right? Real, like, real pain. Like, yeah. Once the real pain came around, I was like, ah, 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 get the fuck out of here. I don't want to yeah. be that's what Because I mean, right as yeah. a seven, yeah. like, avoiding pain is number, number one. one. <laughs> like, that's which true. is ironic yeah. with all of this. It's like, oh, actually, like, I had to figure out how to be harmonious with my pain. And then, like, as a seven, I was like, oh, I know other people struggle with pain. If they avoid it like I do, it's going to cause a lot of weirdness yep. because it's right. caused nothing but weirdness in my life when I've avoided the shit right. that I've caused. And you, you're a seven, yeah. so you know. I actually uh, the aversion to pain. Yeah, that's a, got a tattoo. I don't know. Yeah, yeah yes. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I mean, I feel like I've answered the question, but yeah. it's a lot more of, uh, for me at this point, it is, uh, let me be concise. I do not want to pass on the traits that I have acquired in my own personal shit to my boys. So, good luck. I need to, well, right, but like, mm-hmm. there are things that I can hold myself accountable for True. and not just blindly go, well, 
you're, I, I know I'm gonna fuck them up on something. Right. Exactly. That's unavoidable. You just want to reduce the the, I the re- therapy that they have to have as much as possible. Right. And like everybody has to do like you, everybody. everybody's everybody has shit. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm saying. But like me not dealing with my anger is irresponsible because I know that that's there. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like that's that. So that is my responsibility to then take care of so that my son doesn't lose his fucking mind when he doesn't get what he wants. Yeah. He will when he's a baby because he's a fucking baby. Yeah. Right. But like, I, but those are all opportunities for you to teach him uh, emotional intelligence. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so like, that's I, crazy. That's like, that. that's, that's I think the way that like generations are going to be improving is as we learn how to like fucking take care of our own shit and yeah. then pass a little bit of that on to the next gen. Yeah. For sure. Let me check the camera real quick. Cool. Is it good? Card one is full. When did it stop? I do not know. Well, on that note, I'm going to look over here. You guys should look at this little... Is that... Please tell me that's still going. Yep. Okay, cool. This is going to be a different episode of how we end. <laughs> uh, I love that you're holding it right now. Yeah. That's right. This is really strange. Jared, oh. thanks for being on the show. To you. Absolutely. To you. Thank you. You're here. Love you. Uh, me too. Matt, love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching another episode um, yeah please share this with your friends if you think that they would benefit from it that's right see you guys next time peace